uh, RIP to Dragon Ball Z creator. This is how he passed away from this news source um, called BBC News. Uh, it's only four minutes long. We're gonna uh, everybody send your uh, prayers and condolences out to him uh, right now. Um, whether if DBZ was uh, you know something that you watch, something that you kind of watch, everybody in the world knows what Dragon Ball Z is. Um, it was a very iconic show, very iconic series, still goes on, um, and it will never be forgotten. All right, uh, so let's go. Let's check this out. I, I've seen from a couple of sources of how he passed away, but I want to be sure of how he actually passed away right here from this new the source. The creator of Dragon Ball, check one it out. of the most influential and best-selling Japanese comics, has died at the age of 68. Akira Toriyama was 68. Akira Toriyama. I wanted to make sure somebody you know pronounced his name right. I didn't want to pronounce his name wrong. Akira Toriyama. Um, rest in peace. You made an iconic series, um, and this is. This is going to literally like, this is a time of series. It's going to live on the next Official 30, 50 plus years. Suffered a blood clot on the brain. Dragon Ooh. Ball was first in Japanese comics, has died at the age of 60. heard that? Akira Toriyama was 68. An official statement said he'd suffered a blood clot on the brain. Dragon that is crazy. And to be honest, too, 68, you know, it's middle age, but it's pretty young, you know? Um, anybody know what usually causes like a blood clot in the brain? Um, that sounds just absolutely scary. Ball was I didn't even know you can get a blood clot in the brain. I've heard, I've heard of blood clots before where, you know, you can get it in your leg, your arm. Um, that's awful, man. 14 years ago, it became a huge hit worldwide, spawning cartoons, Usually films, from head trauma? Wow. The series features a boy who collects magical balls containing dragons to defend the world from evil enemies. The studio said he was working on several projects when he died. Wow. Well, for more on this, let's speak to Dr. Raina Dennison, a professor in film and digital art. We have a doctor right here to probably explain. Bristol. Um, tell us about the legacy that he leaves behind. Akira Toriyama is one of the most influential manga artists that there has ever been. He's influenced a whole genre of manga in Japan um, known as shonen manga or boys manga, which is the most popular in Japan and around the world. Um, influencing creators of shows and, and manga like Naruto and One Piece, of course, as well. As well as being someone who has influenced everything from, you know, art exhibitions through to protests um, in places like South America. He's a huge um, influential figure within this field. Everybody say condolences What's in the chat. particularly about Dragon Ball? We can see some characters on the screen there. That in particular, a huge franchise. Many of our viewers will know it very well. It came around in the 1980s and 1984 and was perfectly situated in a growing manga and media market in Japan. And so was quickly adapted into animation, um, famously into Dragon Ball Z, the second part of an anime series that really took the world by storm. So the, the manga has been adapted into over, I think, 21 different countries and languages now. And the um, anime was broadcast originally in, I think, 36 different countries. So has had just this perfect international spread as part of its history. And that's led to it becoming popular around the world, but also becoming a major franchise within and outside of Japan. Um, there's now, I think, about 17 different animated feature films. Um, and the sales of the manga alone hit around 160 million copies. Damn. Would you credit Akira Toriyama with helping to kind of put manga on the international map? Absolutely, yes. He came around in a time when fans were starting to um, grow in number around the world and where fandoms were starting to share texts. The first time I came across Dragon Ball was when a friend from China introduced me to the manga when I was living in South Yorkshire. So it's an amazingly well-traveled story. And it starts in China. It's an adaptation, actually, of Journey to the West, with Son Goku, the main character, being named for Son Wukong, the Monkey King. And in terms of his political influence as well, we touched on it briefly, but how did he have a political uh, influence in Japan and beyond? Yes, um, he was quite a quiet figure, quite a reclusive figure, but he's always been very careful about controlling his materials within inside Japan. And he's been very popular there for generations because I think his stories don't just tell the stories of a successful character, they tell the stories of resilience and determination needed to become a success. 
And this is something I think we see reflected in places like Chile with the recent student led marches using actual Dragon Ball replicas as part of their protests. And uh, just one more question, if I may. I mean, how would you also credit Akira Toriyama of kind of um, spreading Japanese culture more widely around the world? I mean, Kawaii is huge now as well. Uh, there's even an exhibition in London. Um, you know, a lot of people have kind of copied that imagery, whether it's manga or Kawaii, beyond Japan. Indeed, yes. So um, Toriyama's Dragon Ball featured in the, the British Museum's manga exhibition a few years ago. And he's a major figure in spreading a particular kind of aesthetic that has become known as the manga aesthetic. He's certainly been hugely influential, particularly within the boys genre. So less <coughs> in terms of kawaii, but more in terms of the kinds of humor and action that manga are famous for now. There's um, a trope of the spiky haired boy, and that's very much a Toriyama uh, popularized creation, I think. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Rayner. Hey, man, RIP um, to the Dragon Ball Z creator once again, Akira. Um, iconic series. Um, remember the first time watching Dragon Ball uh, when I went over to the same homeboy's house during when it was the Hurricanes. Uh, I already explained this to and y'all in a video and stuff. Um, but shit, I remember when I first got put on a DBZ, bro, I was probably about like 10 or 11 years old. Um, I was right into it right when I had seen the Frieza saga. Um, and then ever since then, um, you know, on and off watching DBZ. Um, not, I wouldn't say like I'm a, um, a, a huge, like crazy, crazy DBZ fan, but I'm definitely a DBZ fan. Um, and I have nothing but respect. Um, my favorite um, anime show that I uh, watch, and honestly, only anime show I watch. I mean, there's a couple of others and stuff, but I didn't really get into it the way I did with DBZ. Uh, rest in peace. Um, very, very creative uh, show and a timeless classic that you uh, created. Everybody can send their condolences out and a disclaimer out for all the people that see this video out on YouTube. I'll uh, disable the monetization, um, you know, uh, in respects of his passing and everything like that.